What's up? All right. So this is a surprise one. I didn't know if I was going to get to it today, but today I'm going to be doing some feedback on the vehicle crosshairs that are currently out on market today. So what am I talking about? I've been playing, I've been playing plant side for a long time. I've been a vehicle main almost the entire time and reticules and crosshairs call them both. I'll, I'll end up switching terms is the little the little thing in the middle of your screen that you use to kind of measure your shots again. Excuse me. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I've been using quite a few of them different at the past year now, and I have some thoughts and feelings on, on all of them. I haven't tried my hand at making my own yet, but I have that video from uh, Boom Chuckle, and I, I think in one day I'll end up doing it, but they're the ones that are out there are really good right now. So, you know, uh, here's normally what I'm working with when I'm playing Planet Side 2. I'm usually in a Fafnir AP Vanguard nowadays, more recently, but I've been using R Heat, which is the reward skin for Vanguard for most of it, like eight of my 10 years. And uh, recently I've been doing a little bit of JGX work on the lightning and also use the mammoth cannon on the Colossus. So those are normally the four builds that I'll run. I don't count ant because it's, it's nothing that you really need to have a reticle against. So I'm usually playing now I play Fafnir a lot, uh, and when I'm not playing Colossus, but then I'll also pull a JGX lightning and, um, our heat Vanguard is just OG for me which is a heat, same thing. So this is what I'm running. I hear the reticles out on market. Now it's a little bit hard. I was looking at, at the preview. It, it's a little bit hard to make out what it is that you see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Windows Photos and I'll show you what each of the reticles are, what they're doing, and then we'll go over some some specifics okay so here are the reticles that are currently in existence normally i do the little dot here you can barely see it but it's in the very very center the little dot and that's because the dot has a a shadow underlay underneath it and that shadow underlay really makes it stand out against the, the default reticle dot and I, I said that I went over that in one of my JGX videos when I first started because I was still using the, the reticle stack, the reticle pack from Recurred Strat, Stat Tracker. Someone in my comments said, hey, you should try out these new reticles. And they linked me one to. To. Uh, Boom Chuckle and Bob Laportos's reticles, which put me down a whole rabbit hole of all the reticules that exist that they make and as you can see they kind of surrounding it's kind of hard to make out but there are a lot of really good ones out there so this is what we're doing i'm going to show you basically what i think of them as i use them so there's a lot of different types uh, a lot of different it, and it's all based on different you know, aspect ratios i use a uh, 13 3440 by 1440 monitor. So it's a 21.9. And that means I have to kind of, I have a really, really wide screen view. So I have to use that. But, so this one right here is one that I've been using for a really long time. I mean, there's just like, there's so many different types, but uh, there's so many things I like about this one. Um, the, the, the colors, it's, it's sparsely populated and it has like a, a little line in the mini map. When it, so when I zoom the mini map out, I can still see exactly what's pointing, what I'm pointing at when I zoom out. Um, then there's different types like this one, which it, which trades this, the radial mini map overlay to kind of like a reflective of, of the main screen, which is the, the line with the little, little colored ticks. It, it's helpful, but not as useful as I'd say this one. Uh, this one's the same thing, but bigger. This one I used for a little while. I really like the dots on the end here. 
that really that helped me kind of better measure my shots. And then this the radial half circles were really helpful in doing fire adjustments. And interestingly enough, can't really see my cursor, but the little diagonal lines that go this way and that way, super helpful. Because sometimes when I'm I'm trying to take a shot, I'm 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 either like cattywampus this way or that way or even if i'm not i'm trying to like hit something at at, at, a, at a diagonal right to me that diagonal right line or left line really helps me to have another anchor point which i can shoot against and then adjust and it just helps um, so same thing here these little dots i think this was my second favorite because it had the radial the, the radio circular mini map with the line and that line always helped me orient which direction I was facing especially when it came up against mountains that are a little bit tougher to see on the terrain map so it kind of helped me kind of gauge my shots better long range but this centerpiece here with the little itty bitty dash marks probably one of the best helpful indicators for for shot adjustment at long range you it's a little bit harder to see Let's see if it'll let me zoom in it will okay great um so the there are range indicators so 200 300 400 500 here that when i use sweep hub sweep hud i can kind of i can point at something see what the range is and then adjust mostly most of the time it's not one for one so a 200 a sunday at 200 does not equal a 200 range here in the second rung which is the second tick mark I usually had to like plus or minus 100 meters or something like that. So I'd be shooting at 300 when my sweeper HUD says that it's 200. But by far the most helpful of when it comes to sight shots. So like when I'm using my screen to sight rather than the mini map or my sweeper HUD, HUD, these little dash marks help me just angle shot like a boss. It, it was awesome. I'm, it's my second favorite reticle. Same thing without the mini map. Same thing. All right, this one is a new one that um, apologize, Boom or Bob. But one of the two of them came out with this not long ago, and it was kind of like a it's kind of like a different. It's a rendition on this one, but colored and like this one. So it's it is sort of helpful, but. What I like most about this is that it's sparse. And I'll go over that in one of my slides here after this, but too much data on the screen overlays what I'm trying to see on the screen. This one here wasn't quite as bad, but the colors make it worse. So the colors will kind of distort what it is I'm seeing on my screen. Whereas this one, it was all, there's green in it, but it mostly monotone. So I didn't have any trouble making things out behind it. This was cool, but way too advanced. I really liked what they, what I think it was Bob, um, what you were trying to do with this one. Way too advanced though. Um, for most, I'm not trying to do that, you know, it's kind of like there's one here, then there's like a, a, a five o'clock, and then there's kind of like a four o'clock. I'm most of the time I'm not shooting at four o'clock. So it's very, very niche. But then the, he had one in his Reddit post that kind of pared it down. So it took that last, that four o'clock measurement off. And then it became so much more helpful because now you have the little dash ticks and you have the dots. And the dots was awesome because it mainly helped me figure out which tick mark I was on at angle. So if I'm trying to shoot at like this angle 400, which is one, two, three, four, five, six tick marks down, on the right hand side very center almost of the screen very very center of the screen right now what i'm trying to hit at 400 all i need to do is find the 400 rung by looking at the middle and this is flash so like half a second i need to figure this out i'm looking at the middle then i it's 400 i find the dot because the dot makes it easy for my eyes to anchor on it and then kind of like wheel to the right for this other one and then as i'm and making shots adjusting left and right on the little dash ticks the alternated colors perfect thank you for doing that that makes it so much easier to tell the difference between the two but more importantly 
is when you create when you when you mask the dot there at the end it helps me further adjust on the fly as i'm firing which is the most i'd say out of all the reticules that is the that is the biggest thing that hurts my ability to use these all the time which is is sustained fire it's not the first shot because I, anyone can sit down at range use a sweep hub be like okay they're 200 meter or um, 800 meters or 500 meters i need to adjust by 50 meters so i need to be shooting at 550 on the reticule and then bam hit or not hit adjust fire anyone can do that first or two shots it's when that fourth or fifth shot starts happening and they start reacting to you. It's when you have to start moving and reacting to them. It's when they're they're running across the horizon and you're trying to hit them. That's where rapid acquisition becomes most important for a tanker like me. Okay. So does that. This one was cool. I like this one a lot. I'm not sure which one I like more. Um, the, the big thing here is that I lose the center reticule so this one does not have crosshair in the very center this one does you can kind of see the difference and th that's a big deal to me i need to see my center mainly because i need a q spot so i can't especially when i start i'm at long range my my sight picture everything is kind of like cluttered together so i have to really pinpoint what it is i'm q spotting and i need that crosshair in the center for that so this one's only this one's more useful than this one simply because of that. Okay. This one was cool. I like this one a lot. I think the reason why I like this one a little bit more is because it just gave me just a little bit more of an anchor. So these the dots were a little bit hard to make out here on the this edge line. So the whatever that diagonal is. But I really liked what you were doing here with the colors. I think that one is one of my, my new favorites. But... I don't have a 13, a 3440 by, or just a 21, 21, nine aspect ratio of it. So it kind of makes it a little bit less helpful, but that's kind of first world problems. This one, um, this one's my favorite, I think. Um, or I guess you should say second favorite uh, because of the mini map with the line and then the dots trying to incorporate colors with the little dash tick marks very very helpful very effective then i start getting to these niche ones like this one it's kind of really hard to make out on the screen but it's kind of got like a crosshair and then three little dots um it was good for adjusting fire but um not much better than that this was pretty helpful i really liked i use this quite a bit in the jgx at long range so i would i would use my mini map to see which color rung were they on and then correspond that with the the vertical center crosshair and just match the colors the only downside of this there's too many colors it would be very hard to even though it would help me be more precise i feel like you should take out every other color because especially when you get to double red it, it's just difficult to to make that fire adjustment based on which vehicle I'm using and which weapon I'm using because every weapon has a different plus minus tick mark. So for instance, an AP, I might be right on the money of red on red, but for JGX, I might need to adjust that to one extra color. So if I'm shooting at teal, I need to be shooting at yellow on screen in order to make the hit. But switching between that constantly, between the different between the different vehicle weapons and trying to line this up with the mini map radial color wheel that's very hard to do so it, it's really good for the first two shots but trying to adjust fire or rapid target acquisition forget about it. it it's hard but i really really like this one this is this was my favorite one for a long time just because of how simple it was to use i didn't need sweep hug and when I could see things at range, all I needed to do was line them up on mini map and then adjust fire on the tick mark based on which weapon I was using. But when it came to shooting things up close, when it came to adjusting fire on things that were moving, much harder to do because there are so many colors with which to contend with. Um, this was good in practice, 
but but not in in reality in and it was good in theory but not in in practice which was this one right here which you can't see it it looks just like this but take away the tank and that's what this one is it's got like the we we and then here uh it was it was my very first ready cool for a very brief time no. this one i think i'm used maybe once it, it wasn't helpful at long range but it did help uh, i think this one was originally for the canister uh, i didn't even find it useful for that uh, in terms of shooting i'm not sure i think this was meant to uh, to take into account the the amount of that your gun moves when you shoot i think good in theory not very helpful in practice this is a new one this is the one i'm using right now i think boom chuckle i think you are the one who created this one last i like this one a lot simple easy to use the only downside sweep hud takes a long time to target acquisition so rapid firing is difficult to do unless i've memorized the tick marks yeah i'm using it right now it's it's much more versatile i'd say this one's very new too i think bob bob i think you and i really need to should have wrote that down which one did which I like this one in theory, but in practice, this was very hard. This one had even a bigger problem with trying to switch color rungs than the other one did because there's just so many. Look how many colors there are. And and the mini map was the biggest problem. Uh, I love the little dots. Love the little dots along that uh, horizontal line. Perfect. Maybe make them bigger. Yeah, make the dots bigger. And then I'd be able to make them out because I'm, I'm telling you, I only have like a split second to to target acquire on moving targets. Otherwise, this thing's useless to me. Um, but the, the so many colors and different rungs on the mini map make it, makes it very hard to correlate. Yellow, yellow is the one I anchor off of because it's the brightest. It's easy to figure out. But what I'm trying to figure out, like dark blue and, and which orange am I on and which red am I on? Like it can get kind of hard to parse all that out. But I love the theory behind it. Probably one of my favorite ones in theory. Uh, kind of the same thing, but it has a a. Oh, you can't see it because I have dark mode on. But there's a 1.75x 100 meter per line, so it, it gives you like a measurement. Love that. Thank you. Uh, who else did that? Here. I think Bob, when you made this, the t the one times and the two times, I absolutely love the alternate the alternative, uh, one times on the left and two times on the right. Perfect. Please keep doing that for all of you. Uh, that's super helpful. Okay, so that is... Those are the ones that I know of and use. I think I have... Excuse me, one more folder. Nope, I went over them. I went over the new ones and the old ones. So if you look at my old, um, some of my older VODs from December, especially the JGX models, you'll see me using different reticles. Sometimes I'll be using this one. Sometimes I'll be using this one. And I tried to test them out to see which one was accurate and which one was fast. So that said, what is important to me when I'm playing? And that what, it really, what it really comes down to is... There are different things I need in different situations, and I use the reticle that fits most of them most of the time. So on the left-hand side, you see here are my here are my needs. As a as a Vanguard, JGX, Lightning, and Colossus user, here's what my needs are. I need to be accurate, which to me means relatively close to my shot being from your reticle, as long as I can adjust fire, like the little dash ticks, so helpful to adjust fire. But it needs to be relatively close to the reticle because when I am 
react in a situation really fast. Like I just came off of a C4 ferry trying to hit me. Now I'm trying to hit a Sunderer 300 meters away. I need to be able to rely on the tick marks in a way that, a, that enables me to hit that target faster. So whether it is a range meter or a color marker, so um, I, I didn't quite get into that, but the range meter one was the was the dash ticks and the one that was based on sweep hub. So I needed to look at where I was, correspond it with what the reticle said, and then adjust fire. Whereas the color one was the, the red, yellow, blue, purple, that one. I kind of, I talked about that in my JGX videos uh, when I was testing them against each other. Whether, whichever one you're using, I need to be relatively close so that I can I can hit the target faster at longer range. It needs to be adjustable, adjustable, meaning when I have incremental fire adjustments, it needs to be predictable. And that's where the dash lines really help out big time. And the and the big mass dots, which let my eyes fixate on an anchor faster when I'm trying to find where on the reticle I need to be hitting. Uh, and I call that inching the shot. So the the masses and the dashes help me inch the shot on target faster. And then also it needs to not get in the way. It can't block too much of my center view. Some of the reticles, like the, the, the last colored version where it had so many different color wheels, that blocked too much. Uh, wait, no, what am I saying? That was the wrong one. The, the one with like the color crescent circles. That one was fine. I'll show you an example. No, wait, I have a slide after this that shows that. Uh, but the one with all of the dashes and all of the text, that one was too much. I'll show you. But what are my wants? So I have what I need. With so many reticles, I can kind of pick on which one I want. And the one that I want is the one that is the most versatile with all the, all the switching of vehicles that I do. I move from JGX Lightning to Ant to Colossus Mammoth to Vanguard, R Heat, R AP, or not R AP, uh, Vanguard AP. I just move in and out like a boss, like crazy. So I need a reticle that can be fairly universal because I don't want to keep on a, going into stat tracker and then manually changing my reticle every single time. It just takes too much time away from the battle. So I'm not looking to do that. So I pick one. And which one do I pick? I pick the one that I can most switch between here on the right hand side, which is being able to. Well, like I said, versatility is number one, so that's the main bullet here. But the versatility means I can switch between my different vehicles, my Lightning, my Vanguard, my Colossus. I can switch between my different loadouts, AP, Heat, JGX. I can switch between minimap zoom in levels and you know there's there's um eight levels possible which means i can zoom in eight times zoom out seven times all right zoom in seven times zoom out seven times and that's where the color one helps me the most is being able to orient faster uh, because the color wheel stays the same and it's always colored in the same color arrangement even if the zoom in and zoom out is different i zoom in and zoom out all the time to figure out where my long range and my short range uh, targets are. So I need something that's versatile that can, that can, I can react to on the multiple zoom in and zoom outs that I do all the time. And I'm constantly doing big little, you know, big little mini maps all the time too. It's just different situations give me different information and I need all of them. Uh, different modules and implants. Sometimes I'm using third person. If I'm JGX Lightning, I'm trying to be in third person all the time because my 29 by nine allows me to see things far away and I can hit better when I'm shooting from third person. And I'm usually moving around in third person in my vehicle. So uh, when I when I target acquire, I'll, I'll go to first person no scope. And then when I need to get far away, I'll do first person. And usually it's 2x zoom. Uh, I've been lately toying with 1.75 because that's just what some of these reticles have, uh, as, as you saw in, in like the, the left, right of like Bob or Booms, Shackles. Reticles, they have 1.75 as their default. So I'll end up using that uh, sometimes, but most of the time I'm trying to use 2x zoom. Uh, don't tell them though, because I haven't quite get fully transitioned to 1.75.
Sometimes I have Sweep HUD on, sometimes I don't. When I'm running logistics specialist for a squad, Sweep HUD is usually the first thing to go because counter intel is more useful to me. So I lose my range meter when I lose my Sweep HUD, which is why the color reticle is so helpful. It doesn't require any sort of range indicator. Like I said, no, sometimes no range meter at all. But sometimes I can facilitate a range meter. Then there's different situations, and this is where it really what it really boils down to. At the end of the day, my versatility is based on the situations I'm in. And the situations I'm in is long range to short range, which means I'm trying to zero in on my mini map versus my hip, my sweep HUD, or I'm trying to rapidly acquire someone on my tick reticule in the center of my screen because they're moving like right at 150, 200, 300 meter range. So that happens all the time. I'm switching between targets, between uh, targets of opportunity. A Sunderer that I see suddenly is smoking. I want to take it out. Or a long range mag rider that I need to hit because it's it's shelling uh, bad people. Or my favorite, a prowler that just locked down um, and becomes a, a stationary target for me. or a low flying Valk. Line of sight, beyond line of sight. This is particularly helpful with the JGX, which excels in my opinion, beyond line of sight targets. So I can hit you from behind a hill. You don't have to see me for me to be able to hit you. It's cool, I love the JGX. I just need to use it a little bit more. I've been too preoccupied with, with the Colossus and now base build. But beyond line of sight, it's called B loss. Beyond line of sight is what the JGX excels at, being able to hit a target who, if they were looking at you, can't see you. I mean, mostly it's like the Hills of Amherst that, that help with that. Switching between direct line of sight. So like I said, that little itty bitty reticule, I think by Boom Chuckle, um, that that had the, it was tiny with, with the 1X, 2X and the the range meter on it super helpful for rapid line of sight right in front of you beyond line of sight a little bit more difficult because it's so contained you can't really see way outside and you normally when i'm firing from third person i'm firing from an angle that is well outside of my whatever is in the in my center so i'm usually looking at like my bottom 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 screen and that's where that that color reticle with the deep red at the bottom, that was super helpful for that one. Just wasn't always lining up with the, the color radial and on my minimap. Last but not least, not last but not least, almost last but not least, moving targets versus fist targets. Moving targets, much harder to hit. I have to track them across my minimap and or the tick marks on my center screen. That can be difficult if I don't have tick marks which is the case of the color reticle. So that means I need to be able to quickly adjust versus being able to calculate my adjustments uh, when I have time or not have time. And then there's fast targeting versus deliberate targeting. That first shot is usually a deliberate target. They can't see me yet. They don't know I'm there. They don't know they need to move. But when I am fast targeting on someone who is like 200 meters away, who knows I'm there and is actively engaging me, I have to sloppily rely on the reticle. So that's where I need it to be relatively close to the markers right here. Because that sloppy reliance uh, means I have to make snapshots. And if I have a reticle that is too far off, then my snapshots will be inaccurate more frequently than they will be and I be accurate. So that's hard to deal with. And then being able to concentrate, which is, you know, come into it having memorized what my tick mark is that I need to be hitting my initial shot on but once they figure out I'm there I usually have to contend with them shooting back that's just what plant side is so that's what my reticle wants are versus my needs I need something that can allow me to switch between these different opportunities fast so what does it look like did this last week I think so here's what that looks like I have Let's see if I can't blow this up a little bit so you can see. Ooh. Zoom in 200%. Okay, so this is me at 
for the ascent or raven's landing or something like that on amorish and there are two things at play here one there is a friendly player base with units behind it and you might be hard to make out but there is you know what? let me just zoom in way way huge that's better okay so there's multiple things at play here okay here's the new color reticle that i'm using uh, i think by bob bob boom one of them and so there are units on that hill behind the the player module which is the infantry tower uh 485 meters away okay then i have an enemy anti-aircraft gun shooting at my air but my lib is trying to fly over above all right so there's two targets that i'm choosing between right now not to mention me keeping an eye on those radio towers for people who's trying to shoot me with their rocket launchers so i really have three things going on there yeah right there but i'm really only target acquiring two of them so what is a jgx lightning to do here in this situation well i need to look on my map here's my map this thing is awesome i love that there's so many radials but it doesn't help me like i mentioned earlier when it comes to target acquisition beyond the third or fourth shot at that point so i'm seeing here that the enemies are a little bit to the right but just beyond my friendlies over there in the blue circle right right there it's my friendlies enemies are right about there so i need to i know i need to be shelling that i just don't know where they are yet but this aa gun is the first thing i need to take out it is just shy of the purple okay so this is the color reticle the new color reticle it's just shy of purple so what do i do i adjust fire so that the purple right here is just above the red anti-aircraft gun and then i'll take my shot and then i'll be like oh i was way over let me let me move it down a little bit so that it's now halfway between red and purple or i went way way under so let me move up to maybe yellow right here okay and then when i see the enemy in 4 485 i know that they are about yellow in between yellow and purple so now i will use the shot that i made on red to say like okay i was i was too far under so let me go ahead and move it above yellow to maybe pink and see if i can hit them and i'm trying to shoot both at the same time and i'm doing it in third person just like i am right now so this is where this is this is kind of helpful i do like this one but then let me change reticles to this one the beast as you can tell a little bit harder to see what's going on in my screen but i love the information that it provides me love the alternating color ticks here this one is yellow white yellow white and then the alternating dash ticks of green which helped me really refine my shot at long range this one is reliant on uh, meter range so it's a little bit hard to make out but it says what 200 400 um, so what I do is this one's at 485. I look at my mini map and what is it? It's frozen. Hold on. It's a little frozen right now. <laughs> Lex, I just saw your stuff. That's funny. <laughs> All right, let's reattack. Okay. So I I go to my mini map and I say, "Oh shoot, I don't have a, a mini map helper." So what do I need to do? I need to put my center reticule. And that's why I have a waypoint because I can't see the target behind the player module. So I hit it with a a a waypoint. The waypoint gives me the range meter, and then the range I can then put it here. This is 400 right here. This wheel. So I'll put the 400 on like the center, shoot it, and see if I get a hit marker. If I don't, I'll adjust fire for where I think it is over or under. But it doesn't really help me with this one 
because it's well i can't see how far away it is i have to i have to put my marker on top of the icon in my mini map which i can't see right now because it will eventually just make it i won't be able to see it on my mini map after a while so very helpful i love this one i love the information but it's only somewhat useful so let's go to bottom left Ugh, it keeps on freezing on me so let's go to bottom left what am i dealing with bottom left bottom left i have one of my favorite reticles right here it is the vertical line color marker whereas this one this one's color this one's color this one is range a range meter this one's a range meter because it's based on how far you are with your sweep hud versus this one is how far you are versus colors so color versus range so this one's my color one i use this one for a really long time i love it it's my go-to because of how easy it is so here see how you see red here then it's teal yellow purple or pink i mean so all i do is look here with the line going straight i line the line up with the red the with the enemy or in this case where the aa gun is and then i say okay aa gun is in between perp and yellow now let me line it up in between or pink and yellow see this is the part i'm talking about I think it's purple when it's actually pink because how far away it is from my eyes i i just haven't i need something that's easier to differentiate between the colors but this is like just the right amount of clutter for it to be super useful almost all the time this is the one i used for most of my my vehicle pulls because of just how flexible it was across multiple multiple shots loadouts and all of that so i would i would um i would then put it in between you know like right here in the middle take my shot try and get a hit marker and then adjust fire as needed super easy to adjust fire not as easy as this one mind you because of the little dash marks i could more f refine my shot whereas this one oopsie whereas this one just a little bit harder because there's no like individual little dashes. Uh, so, and even then, if I was at an angle, I'm I'm straight right now, looking straight at a target. But if I was like up against this hill right here, then I would have to use the 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 diagonal slide, oh, like this one. This one will be more helpful at an angle. This one's helpful at an angle. This one is somewhat helpful at an angle. So. Uh, super helpful in hitting the the AA gun, but not as helpful hitting the people at the 485 mark. And then last but not least, the newest one that I've been using right now is this one. And helpful for hitting the 485 because it's based on range. Less helpful for hitting the beyond line of sight AA gun. And it's just over this hill, even with the JGX. Right, so let me show you the last slide I have here. This was my assessment of what was helping and what wasn't helping. So as I just said, the top left here, which is the color crescent wheel, almost. It was super helpful in hitting the beyond line of sight target because i could easily cross reference i froze again because i could easily cross reference what this line marker was on top of the aa gun with the color wheel and where it was very helpful we go. i could easily cross reference between the two except that there were there are so many color wheels like even a brown now that it's just hard to switch between them but at range when i have the time to concentrate that's easier to do up close or in a hectic battle super hard to do almost unusable is this one but i i really like what this one's after because having the 
the kind of wheel, the half crescent wheel, helps me adjust fire in almost all different terrain. Like when I'm up on a hill, when I'm behind a hill, when I'm when I've got my um, when I'm sa sideways, I'm cattywampus. Helps me out. But the, the so many wheels here make it um, make it a con. This one uh, is missing the middle cross here reticle right here that I was talking about earlier, right here. And I need that, and that big time. So I, I switched to the other one, which didn't have this. <laughs> so it didn't have any sort of marker on my mini map to help me out, but it did have the dots. And you can see how you can actually make the dots out. Very helpful for trying to find my target at long range. And then these dash marks just are clutch when it comes to long range fire adjustment. Love it. This one, I'm finding it to be very helpful. It's very versatile. It is the most versatile range meter that I can find. However, it is very difficult to snap fire. So when I'm trying to find targets long range at, at short, uh, at very fast, like this right here, this reticle doesn't help me find this guy on my mini map. I have, I can't see him. So I don't know what the range there is. All I have to do, but what I have to do instead is I have to switch between waypoints, which in a hectic battle, that's that's very untenable. It's hard for me to to do that. So it does help me find the waypoint that I put down at 485 and then put shots on it at range. But it doesn't help me snap fire or otherwise take advantage of targets of opportunity that pop up on my hood. And then this one, like I said, love this one. Absolutely love it. The the mini map with the line super helpful in determining approximate ranges. It's just a, it's difficult to make out the lines a little bit. And more importantly, I get very confused between the orange and the yellow. The the base, the far red and the and the little red. In in snap situations, my brain takes too long to figure it out. And so it it hurts. It hurts my reaction time. But this thing is just clutch. Love that I can look almost entirely up on my screen. Because to hit this target here, I have to be looking up here. You can't even almost see where I'm trying to look at. Oh, here we go. I'm looking up here, trying to hit this target with this reticle. And this reticle helps me do that because of... Mm, it's hard to see. There, there's the red down here below fire suppression. Let me zoom out. Here. You might not be able to see it very well, but there's a red tick mark right here, which corresponds with the, the furthest red right here. That has been so helpful to me in many situations. So that's where I really like this. It's the HUD is out of the way. It's not in my way. It's it's helpful in most situations. It doesn't help me when it comes to range metering. So this 485, it's hard to hit a 485 at this because I don't know which one is 485. I just have to be using it long enough to memorize it. Um, so yeah, I love each of them for different reasons. I really love this one. Like I, I can do with it cluttering my space just because of how easy it is to adjust fire in almost any situation. I don't even need the range meter with this one. I can just shoot at, here's how easy this is. Here's how useful this is. It's not easy, but it is useful. All right, so I can shoot at this furthest tick mark right here. Yeah, and then I'll be like, okay, no, it didn't hit there. It hit there. I already have, I'm already on target at that point. I can just keep firing here, knowing that it will hit at this tar tick mark. And if the Sunderer undeploys and tries to move, all I need to do is just keep this first left tick mark on top of them. And I will always hit that second tick mark. That's all I need to do. It's awesome. Absolutely love it. And then the, the big little knots here, the little dots, just really help me orient in my brain kind of spatial awareness. Absolutely love it. Downside is it's very difficult for me to hit things long range. 
and I am engaging long range before I engage short range. Even though I'm an aggressive tanker, I, f I frequently find myself in situations where I need to utilize my minimap to hit long range. Which this doesn't help me do. Oh, yeah. So that's that's what a tanker, at least for, speaking for myself, as a tanker, that's the stuff I look for. I look for things that help me engage in every type of situation that Planet Side 2 demands. Different vehicles, Lightning Vanguard Colossus, different loadout, a AP Heat JGX, different minimap zoom in levels. You know, am I on the 11th or the, the 7th zoom in? I'm on the 1st. Different modules and implants. Am I using third person no scope? Am I using or am I using third person? Am I using first person no scope? Am I using first person scope with 1.75 with 2.0? Am I using sweep HUD? Am I not? Am I using range meter? Am I not? Every situation I can change in five minutes, three, four times. Different situations in my short range and long range, which means I need to zero in on my target versus rely on my tick marks in a rapid, fast format. Am I using, can I see them line of sight or do I have to rely on my mini map, which is beyond line of sight or my HUD, which I still can't see. I have to rely on third person at that point. Um, mini map markers, range tick markers, which one am I using? Uh, am I shooting at a target that's moving versus fixed, which means I can, I can take my time or I have to make very quick adjustments. Am I targeting things quickly? because I'm, you know, peaking. Am I able to take my time? Concentrate on, which means I can concentrate on the information of the reticle. So that would be this one, right? I can have more time to concentrate on all the information that's available to me in this reticle. Or am I peaking and I only have like a split second. So this one right here, where I, I know I need to be hitting on the yellow tick mark when I peek just beyond a rock and I'm taking halberd fire or or desi fire versus this one right here also, which helps me out, knowing that I need to hit on the, the, the tick mark just below the crosshair. So that's what I go through. And that's what I'm using whenever I am trying to figure out which one, which reticle I want to use. Hope this helped. Uh, Boom Chuckle, I'm mainly speaking to you and Bob Laportos, the both of you. I love your reticles. Absolutely love them. I use them all the time in different scenarios. I try to only use one, but I just, they're so good. They have different uses for each instance. So I'm trying not to use different ones, but inevitably I do use different ones. Uh, and that's it. That's my feedback on reticle crosshairs. Using Recursion Strat, track, recursion stat Tracker and the, the crosshair download option so thanks and lex appreciate you showing up man we need to do part two tell me when all right i'll see y'all